Hi everyone, this is Ravi. Welcome to Pricentis Tosca Advanced Training. As you all know, I have already published 52 YouTube videos covering beginners, intermediate and advanced level concepts. So from couple of videos onwards, I have started teaching you some real time scenarios where you might encounter different types of obstacles while automating your test cases and I have started explaining you how can we solve those obstacles and this is our obstacle 11 in terms of real time scenarios and this is our lesson 53 in terms of overall price and test Tosca advanced training. So in this lesson I am going to teach you a real time scenario where you need to add random numbers by using math expressions and then I am also going to introduce you to the user simulation where we can use this user simulation concepts while solving the obstacle. Please do subscribe to the channel, click on bell icon, you will receive notifications whenever I publish more videos. Thank you. So this is our 11th obstacle named as addition and it is categorized as medium. So let's go for it. So let us see what is the scenario that we need to automate or what is the challenge that we need to solve for. Input the sum of two randomly generated numbers into the sum field. So basically these are randomly generated numbers, random one number, random two number and you need to enter some of these two random numbers. So if I enter the sum of these two numbers correctly in the sum edit field, then you solve this automation problem. If I do, let me try again, this random numbers keep changing. Okay, so now let us see how can we automate this particular challenge. Let's go back to our Tricentis Tosca. As you all know, we are capturing all the objects related to each and every obstacle that we covered in obstacles module folder. So let me right click on this obstacles module folder, select scan and application. So select the application that you would like to scan and click on scan button. And here you can see random 1, random 2 and sum, right? So if you see this is my random 1 text and this is my random 2 number and then this is the result. Okay, so you can see here all those controls are uniquely identified. This one is uniquely identified. This is uniquely identified. This is uniquely identified. And here I would like to rename this because these numbers are not constant. It's keep on changing. So I'm going to name this as number one. And this is my number two. And if you see the right side properties, okay, here I can see I have ID and tag label. I don't want to select inner text because the inner text keep changing. But I can use this inner text property to get the value of this number, right? In the same way for number two as well. And then result is your edit box, okay? So now, let us save this module with obstacle name, copy this obstacle name and then paste it here. Now save the module and then close your X scan. So let's go back to our Tricentis Tosca. So this is our new module that we added, right? Number one, number two result. So now let us create a test case. So now let's go back to our test case section. 
which is blue color right this is our obstacles test case folder where we are automating all the test cases related to each and every obstacle right click on this create a new test case name this as the same obstacle name double click on this now to create a test steps we need to drag this new module that we created and drop onto your test case now let's expand this what we need to do we need to first capture the inner text of this object and this object okay for that this is my first number one randomly generated number for this select inner text equal to i'm going to store this into a num1 as a buffer value okay this is my buffer name num1 i'm instructing taskar to store the inner text of this object into a buffer name num1 and your action mode should be buffer right now again for object 2 you need to store the inner text for that click on this drop down select inner text equal to buffer name i'm gonna give it as num2 okay and then your action mode should be buffer now we need to add the values that stored in these two buffers and then print the result in this edit box so how can we add the two numbers by using the math function so now let me show you how can we write the math function any method or functions that we need to call in tosca we need to use open curly braces math see this is my math function and open square braces close square braces and close your curly braces this is my math function notation right here i am going to write the operator num1 and num2 operators okay i mean I'm, here i am going to write actual formula what i am going to do here i need to call buffer1 and then operator plus and then call buffer2 that's it okay for that to call buffer open curly braces capital b open square braces num1 is my first buffer close square braces close curly braces and then your operator plus now you need to call your second buffer open curly braces capital b open square braces num2 close square braces close curly braces so as soon as you click here it should convert into this format if it is not convert into the format means you are making some mistake let's say if i remove this curly braces see now it is not convert into the for format that means this is wrong just right click and then translate value see it throws an error message see unexpected end value token if i correct this now it converted to this format right click and then translate value so then see your expression found correctly click ok so now here the action mode should be input so now before i mark this test case as completed let's run this test case and see if it works right click so before that let me save this right click and run in scratch book see here now it added 68 and 48 and then it entered the result 116 but if you observe closely we did not get the pop-up saying that you are automation problem solved successfully why because we have just inputted this particular value we haven't typed it if you type this right then only you'll get it but what we did we just input the value 
so that doesn't trigger the user, user simulation basically you need to make sure that when you enter the value you need to pass the user simulation how can we do that there are two methods one is you can send the keys so that it simulates the keyboard how can i do that to send the keys again open curly braces send keys open square braces and here close square braces core close close curly braces so here now send keys what i am sending this buffer plus second buffer i am sending right now save this and let me run this now i should get the success message see now it entered the correct result and you got this you solved this automation problem why simple if you are using a keyword called send keys it simulates the your system keyboard that's why you are getting the success message there is another method to perform user simulation how let me delete this send keys here now okay the next method is let's go back to your modules okay here i can perform user simulation by introducing steering parameter how let's go here now we are entering the value here right while entering i need to perform user simulation so go to this object in the module this is my object result is the object so for this object you need to add an additional steering parameter how right click here on the module select create steering parameter here the parameter name should be user no space capital s simulation so you need to make sure that spelling is correct user no space capital s simulation okay now this user simulation should be true basically what what i am instructing tasca consider this edit box as a user simulation box so whatever you input here that should take your user simulation consider this as user is entering it okay so now let's save this now okay let me now let's save this test case and let me run this one before running this i would like to mark this test case as completed work state completed completed save this now let's run this again okay this time also i am not using send keys here right but still i should get automation solved successfully message so it should add two random values see here now it entered successfully and i got this you solved this automation problem also right so that is how you can perform random number additions how we can use send keys and how we can use user simulations so if you have any queries leave your queries in the comment box i'll try to respond to your queries thank you